Welcome to the Peoria City Council meeting of November 17th, 2015. We have one item on the study session agenda tonight, and that is the fiscal year 2016 mid-year budget. Mr. Swenson. Yep. Thank you, Mayor Carlett uh, and council members. Um, uh, as, as you mentioned, we just have one item on our study session agenda this evening, but it's a very important item, uh, and it is a fairly significant mid-year adjustment, and the, and the council is uh, well aware that um, finances have been limited, our, fi our financial capacity has been limited over the last few years um, and is improving, uh, but um, in the years that it was limited, we were not able to have um, substantial uh, budget uh, increases mid-year. Um, but because of our financial position improving, uh, I'm very happy to be able to bring to you this evening um, some fairly substantial uh, increases, some adds, uh, particularly in our public safety arena to our uh, fire and emergency medical uh, and police, but also a general fund position and several other um, positions uh, in, and uh, um, improvements in the solid waste fund that we'll talk about as well to meet growth. Um, so it's, it's kind of an exciting moment for us to be able to, to do this after uh, several years of not being able to, to, to meet these kinds of needs mid-year. Uh, and importantly, the, the way we thought of, of bringing this to you was to hearken back to the direction that you gave us uh, in, in the last budget process. And what we are, are following is that policy direction that, that you provided with respect to the importance of public safety and meeting the growth uh, that we were seeing, particularly in the northern part of the city. Uh, also, we're meeting the needs of, of the growing and, and active uh, work and agenda that the mayor and council has. You've got a very aspirational um, set of, of goals and, and you're pursuing those and, and I wanna make sure that you have the staff uh, necessary to support you in that endeavor. So that's, that's in here uh, as well. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Katie Gregory, our deputy uh, finance and budget director, and she will uh, give you a little bit more information. Great. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I'd like to just spend a little bit before I go into the actual mid-year adjustment recommendations, just spend a few minutes to talk about some of our financial foundations. And as you know, Peoria has a history and a tradition of very um, thoughtful and prudent financial management. And really that, again, is a testament to the councils and the councils prior to you that have all um, held to those principles um, and ensure that we have those, those financial management tools in place. Throughout the year, we do track, obviously, what's happening in the economy um, and the various economic indicators that impact our outlooks, all of our outlooks and all of our funds. And we regularly evaluate our revenue collections and update our financial forecasts uh, accordingly based upon what we're, what we're seeing. We do that, though, obviously, with a long-range sort of perspective, right? So we're looking at these things on a more longer-term perspective, and that's one of our key financial um, policies. And it really is particular to our structural balance and our ongoing structural balance that we like to look at. Um, we do currently, within all of our departments, we're working within uh, the revenues that we have to meet all of our city obligations and financial commitments and program objectives, and we also believe it's important to recognize that every city has sort of their own economy a bit, right, and, and their own um, um, local economies. So our financial management should be based on some of our local economy and some of those revenue sources associated with that. While it is still a little early in the fiscal year, um, we are seeing that our financial outlook is improving. It may not be what everybody would like it to be, <laughs> but it is improving. Um, and we do see revenue growth above our projections. We are seeing some strong retail sales tax um, growth in the areas, primarily in the areas of auto sales and say restaurant and bars and some other retail. Um, and we're also seeing that reflected in our state shared revenues that we're receiving. Um, and those are trending slightly above what our projections are, are as well. So um, just in the short time that we've had in this fiscal year, I would, we're roughly about 2% above kind of our projections that we had at, for this time of year. And there's lots of factors that are contributing to that. Um, I could name them all, but we all have heard about them all over the years. The job growth is improving. Um, consumer confidence is improving. We've had this nice time with uh, gas, gas prices being low and people feeling like they have the ability to spend maybe a little bit more. We're seeing new construction in the city and home improvements being done. So a lot of those, those categories um, are really um, continuing to improve and that's a good sign. On the other side of the equation, we're also um, anticipating within our forecast some of that normal expenditure growth that you, growth that you would see, um, but 
as I was mentioning, departments are working within their means, and they're doing a really good job of managing their expenditures and maintaining control in that discipline over their expenditures. So that really is important to the other side of the equation as well, right? Um, there are a couple of other important factors that um, kind of play into our discussion tonight, and that first one is the mid-decade census. Um, we're all familiar about what we're doing with the mid-decade census, and once those numbers are finalized, we do anticipate an adjustment to our proportionate share, obviously, of the state shared revenues, and we anticipate about a 1.5% increase um, over current year's share. So um, that's going to be a nice um, added uh, ongoing stream of revenue that we can count on. And additionally, the city once again has had a really good year um, with our healthcare claim costs as well as um, some delayed impacts that we anticipate, delayed <laughs> impacts associated with what you may have been hearing about the healthcare Cadillac tax that the feds are still trying to decide what that is and where the thresholds are. But uh, we do see that that is going to be delayed for Peoria, which is a good sign as well. Um, so this has helped reduce our projected costs and the related health care rates that are associated with that. So that cost containment is important as well. As Carl mentioned, from time to time, we do find that we have some new resource requirements um, and either staffing or, or, or equipment or otherwise and we identify, that are identified to help address a lot of those organizational needs that we have out there and the growing needs that we have. We have a lot of areas of the city that continue to see increased demands upon them. Um, an example that we did earlier in the year, just as a reminder, is that after the budget was approved, shortly thereafter, we came back as we were really seeing that uptick in some of the development activity and the need for some inspectors to help provide that kind of level of service that we needed in those areas of building development. So council approved the conversion of some, some contract to some FTEs and made sure that we had some of the resources that we need there. And we continue to watch that very closely, um, you know, in terms of are we meeting those needs that are out there currently. And as you may recall during the budget discussion, as Carl had mentioned, you all have some priorities that you would like to see the city fund. And so um, consistent with that direction, obviously, and in recognition of those priorities, um, we are bringing forward these mid-year budget adjustments that we feel we have the current capacity to be able to fund. And the approval of the mid-year adjustments will help address some of the high priority items that otherwise we would normally have to wait until the budget process to go through. So that's how we've used mid-year budget adjustments in the past is that let's put the money to work as quickly as possible really is kind of the key here. So staff, I'm going to spend a few minutes going through some of the adjustments that we're recommending. I know Carl wants to make a few comments on a few of them. Um, I'm going to do it by fund, so it kind of gives you um, some context of how we're going through this. So we'll start with the general fund, and I'll let Carl kind of introduce this piece. Thanks, Katie. I just want to mention a little something about each, each of the, uh, the position ads, the categories. Um, and of course, uh, the council has had uh, increased funding for uh, fire and emergency medical as, as a high priority, particularly in the northern part of the city at, at the lake. Um, and this was highlighted in your um, seminar discussion on a Saturday um, a couple of months back where uh, you all spent a Saturday with us and our, our folks from uh, fire and emergency medical talking about um, the service delivery trends and the importance of this uh, service not only to, to you but to the citizens. And so we're very fortunate to be able to fund uh, bringing six um, new uh, uh, FTEs our, our fully funded employees uh, into um, the fire and emergency medical. And this will allow us to fund the lake um, full time, the station at the lake, um, and also begin um, the uh, important uh, service of increasing and improving our emergency medical piece as well. Um, so Katie, would you like to sure. uh, drill down on that a little bit? Yeah, to give you a little more context of that, um, in last year's budget process, um, and related to this first one on the four firefighters for the um, lake service, if you recall, we had identified six firefighters in the budget with the assumption that four of those firefighters would be funded through the SAFER grant that we had applied for. And we were fairly confident at the time that we thought we'd get the SAFER grant, and unfortunately, we have not received that yet. Um, Having said that, the need still exists, and um, so we had those positions funded in the fiscal year 16 budget. What we're asking is that you allow us to fill that without the guarantee of any kind of 
reimbursement from the um, SAFER grant so that we can continue to move forward on getting that, that level of service um, increase there at the lake. So that's what the mid-year will include some funding to be able to do that. It doesn't include the funding for the additional FTEs because we've got that covered in the budget but it would include funding for some of the one-time requirements that we need there, and then of course, continued funding going forward. Um, the, uh, the second one is, as Carl had mentioned, um, that discussion about the alternative response vehicles and being able to attend to some of those low acuity calls that we see, um, and that the firefighter currently is responding to with a full engine. Um, and those, that's probably not the most efficient use of our crews. And so this is a way for us to maybe um, defray some of those, that, those inefficiencies and keep them in service and available to those who really require that service and let, let the ARVs take on some of those lower acuity calls. So those are what those two, um, those two items are. Any questions about that? Or? Okay. Um, the police department, we're recommending two new police officers. Did you want to talk about this yeah, one? Yeah, I, I just okay, want to mention sorry. a little bit, not, not to interrupt you, but um, this, this as well was something that was discussed in the budget process. The council uh, felt that it would be important when our financial circumstance allowed um, to add um, a, a limited number of police officers, as was recommended by Chief Minter. And the chief has done, a, I think, an excellent job of managing the, the human resources within the department. And he was recommending uh, that we add uh, the positions we did last year at the beginning of the budget process, and also these positions uh, when, when financing um, became um, uh, available. And like uh, Katie mentioned with respect to the to fire EMS positions, uh, for the SAFER grant, we also had applied for um, its equivalent in the police world, which is, is referred to as a COPS mm -hmm. grant. Um, and again, while we had a good application, we have not um, received that federal funding. And I think the, the fundamental reason is that we do not have the, um, the financial problems or the crime problems um, that, this, that the cities um, have that are receiving those grants. So um, the, the, the competition, you might say, had, had a worse um, set of circumstances that they were trying to fund. Um, and so we are fortunate to be able to bring these two police officers um, on now in, in this budget amendment. So I may have yeah, said I really what don't you were have a whole lot more to say about that, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but yes, that is true. So, and this would also include a patrol vehicle, and it's primarily to provide for some of that increased service activity and demand that we're seeing in the northern portion of the city. One side note on this one is that the vehicle we can purchase with other funds, not, not general fund, um, we can use impact fees. See, they're coming in handy. Yeah. We can use impact fees to purchase the police vehicle, so um, that's what that one's for. There are a couple other items that are on the within the general fund. The first one is for a senior policy advisor, and Carl, if you want to. Yeah, and let me one. let me speak to that one as well. And and this one's a little different than the other two, but but also very important. And we're very fortunate um, since Mayor Carlet uh, was elected that she has. Um, the time and, and interest uh, to represent the city in, uh, in the very aptly in a, in a leadership role, um, not just in the metropolitan area, but in the state, um, being on the uh, League of Cities uh, Executive Board and um, the Greater Phoenix Economic Council Board and Westmark and um, the Maricopa Association of Governments um, leadership uh, boards. And so we've been very fortunate that she has jumped in and gotten um, those leadership positions right away. And it's real important uh, that we provide the staffing um, that she needs and that the council needs so that we can uh, make sure that um, that, that representation uh, is well supported. And this is a very important position to me and I, I believe to the mayor. And I think it's, it's something that we're happy to bring forward as well. And the last item um, in the general fund is funding to support, um, as you recall, I believe, I'm not sure exactly when it was, but we approved the new IGA with Peoria Unified School District. As part of that IGA, there were some increased costs for the cities related to facility use. Um, so we need to have the uh, funding in the current year to be able to cover that. The Community Services Department is looking for revenue offsets to that to the degree that they can. Um, so we'll be bringing some of that information forward during the budget process. But um, for now, we need to ensure that we have the appropriation to be able to, to pay those. So the total amount for the general fund is about $597,000 for fiscal year 16. And again, as I mentioned, we'll be able to purchase the police vehicle through impact fees. 
The next fund is the um, half cent sales tax fund, and there's a couple of items listed on there, as you can see. The first one is to fund some one-time money to have available for any types of legal services or reviews of degree agreements or things like that that we want to do with some of the economic development projects. So this is more of a, we anticipate that we'll have some of that. We don't know um, if we'll need the full amount, but um, we do anticipate that we'll have some of that. So that's one-time funding for that. Yeah, and let me, let me add a little bit to that too. And this is something that, of course, with the council's um, uh, more uh, aggressive economic development ad, uh, agenda and, and objectives. We're now um, anticipating entering into more uh, development agreements and, and um, acquisitions and, and, uh, and so forth. Um, and the city attorney has um, asked that we put some additional money in there for legal support uh, to the work that uh, is coming from that. And that's what this would cover. And the second item is for the sports complex. Uh, currently with the renovations that were done to the um, facilities, um, in, increased square footage, things along that line, we are seeing an increase related to electricity costs there. Again, looking to defray some of those costs associated with re facility rentals and having the additional space to be able to rent. So we're looking to be able to defray some of those costs, but um, we do need some expenditure appropriation in the current year in order to be able to address those, those costs. So the total amount for the half cent sales tax fund is about $158,000 um, for fiscal year 16. I'll let Carl start this sure, one again sure. too. <laughs> um, well, and, and this too goes back to the, to the council's goals from the budget process of making sure that we had um, staff to support the growth that is now occurring again in the northern part of the city particularly. And um, we have been uh, feeling that in our, in our solid waste, particularly residential solid waste uh, collection. And so what um, this ad will do is bring um, the, the, the individuals, the, the uh, full-time equivalent employees in uh, to meet that, and also um, some equipment, um, the trucks, uh, for our solid waste collection. So to get into a little bit of detail on that, we, um, in the solid waste operations, they've utilized in the past contract, um, contract uh, operators in order to kind of, as we grow, and of course we had sort of that history of growing a lot and kind of understanding it, and then things stopped, and now we've sort of been incrementally trying to adjust to the new growth that's occurring. They've utilized some contract um, services or contract employees to do that. They're looking to uh, provide some benefits and some additional hours to those contract employees as well as um, hire a, a new FTE um, operator. And this, these are the people that are going to be out picking up, you know, <laughs> the garbage and the recycling. Um, so this is directly related to the need um, associated with growth in the city. It also includes the purchase of two solid waste vehicles. Um, and that's with the anticipation that we will need to come forward again um, during the budget process with some um, additional, possible additional FTEs. And it's, the vehicles take a long time for us to be able to actually acquire. So um, those are on there. Again, those can be funded through what we have available in our solid waste impact fees. So we'll be paying for that with, with impact fees. The other item on there is some one-time funding for a cleanup and some tree trimming and removal for um, a, a city parcel that um, has, um, that we are been made aware of north of Fletcher Heights um, subdivision along Williams Avenue between 75th and 79th. So it's a, um, really to get in there, we've got some overgrowth there um, and we need to take care of that and it's outside of our normal maintenance that we have scheduled within this, the stormwater fund for, um, for fiscal year 16. So we've added that onto this as well. So what we're looking to do is that um, as council gives us direction to go forward with this tonight, we would like to place this on the December 1st council agenda for approval from council. And if they're approved, obviously those items that need to be incorporated on an ongoing basis into our forecast will be put into our fiscal year 17 and, and looking forward forecast. So with that, any questions? Thank you. Council, any questions? No? Okay. Well, I would just like to say that these are, these are really great ways to put our money to work. You know, I appreciate that we had some extra funds and we're, we're putting it in situations that are going to be directly applicable to um, the citizens, serving the citizens. We've got, you know, public safety and public works and there's nothing, you know, more boots on the ground than both of those things. So uh, I think it's really 
highly appropriate. And um, I appreciate it. Thank you for bringing this forward. Yeah. Yes. Do we have any money left over there? <laughs> <I mean. laughs> we do anticipate that we will have some ability to have some additional funding um, at this time. Some of that. Uh, I'm sorry, at mid-year? Well, this is mid-year, but right. budget adjustment. So did we go right down to the wire on this, or is there 89 cents left over or something? Well, or a million if or maybe um, if I can uh, I translate your question, I, 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 w there will be some money available um, for the council to direct towards new positions or, or uh, enhanced services in next year's uh, budget process. Uh, but um, there, this, we are, in anticipation of that, we are spending some of the money um, here to now that would have been available then. And I, and I think the, the important piece of that is when we, have, when we know what the priorities are and we know what the needs are, I believe it's better to put the money to work um, to follow your, your, your direction from the past process rather than wait until um, you know, the coming process to, to do it then. Uh, but we will have some uh, funds available, Councilmember Hunt, then. I, I guess I thought that this was extra money that we'd come up with and that it wouldn't affect our 2017 budget. One of the things I think, when we, when we bring forward um, and we, we forecast each year and we bring forward budget requests, we're typically bringing forward requests that is fully utilizing what we believe is going to be available. So when we built the fifth fiscal year 16 budget, we, we assumed we were using all of what was available. Now we did know, the one thing we were sure of is that assuming we went forward with a mid-decade census, there was going to be some additional funding coming from the mid-decade census. We did not program that last year because, of course, we hadn't gone through that process yet and we weren't sure we were even going to or, you know. So every year when we bring forward a budget, we're assuming we're, we're, we're looking at that five year and we're trying to ensure that we're utilizing the funds that we have available in the highest priority areas. So the census is one area where we think we have some additional funding. Some, the cost containment related to health care um, helped free up what we thought we were going to have to spend. So there's a little bit of funding associated with that. Um, and then obviously when you have growth in revenues above what you project, there's some, there's some funding there. So we feel that for a mid-year, this is a very um, realistic look at what we can do in a mid-year and still give us some time to kind of flesh through what those revenues are going to be, you know, year end, and, and how that's going to impact our longer projection, and still have the ability to have budget a budget process similar to you know prior years, and be able to, you know, put some of that money to work too once we have. But it's a little early to, to do it all, right? Sure. So we're looking to try to manage this over over the course of the year. Okay. Does that make Does that answer your question? Sorry. Of okay. That. Yes. That's it's okay. <laughs> it's kind of windfall apples. Right? It's kind of windfall. A, a, a little bit. Some of it we knew was likely to come, um, but we also knew we had a lot of needs. So, um, you know, it We're was just trying to balance. those now at the mid year. At the earliest than, point mm -hmm. that we can, try to match those waiting up. waiting to get them, even though the, because right. the money's there. Okay, right. Okay, yes. I've got that. That's right. Council, anything else? All right, Mr. Swenson? No, that's all. All right, then we are adjourned until our 7 o'clock meeting. <laughs>